Good evening and welcome back to Sunday Night Discipleship. We're glad that you're with us again tonight as we continue to explore a book that has been a tremendous blessing to my life, and I pray it has also been a tremendous blessing to your life. This book is simply called If by Mark Batterson. And we've been reading through the different chapters and we've been looking at the different principles that Mark has brought to us and also engaging in the online study through Right Now Media, a fantastic resource of encouragement and biblical truth. And again, I would like to encourage you, if you do not have access yet to Right Now Media, we want to get you that access. And yes, it is free. No strings attached, no kind of special conditions. All you got to do is go to Heartland Worship Center's website, hwcagra.com, and click the link for Right Now Media and sign up for free. It is a resource that I believe will bless you and will bless your family as it encourages spiritual growth through study of God's Word. The book, If, has, has caused us to basically examine some things in our life. It has encouraged us to trade our if-only regrets for God's what-if possibilities. And as we conclude this particular study this evening, I want to begin by making a statement that if this is all you hear, then I want you to hear this loud and clear. And that statement is simply this. God is for you. I'm going to say that again. God is for you. And when we think about God or how we think about God today, it will absolutely impact many different areas of our lives. Let me, let me bring a quote to you from A.W. Tozer that simply says this, and I paraphrase, what comes to mind when we think about God is the most important thing about you. In other words, the most important thing about you will shape how you view God. Again, I want to reemphasize a very important truth of how God views you. God is for you. And God loves you so much that he was willing to give his son for you. He values you. You are his delight. And tonight, I hope that that truth is sinking in as this world would try to convince us otherwise. As we look at God and how we view God, that will absolutely impact our faith level or our spiritual walk with God. Knowing that God is for us today will help us to dismiss the lies of the enemy. Lies that would ask questions like, if God really loves us, then why does he and you can fill in the blank? Those type of statements only come from a devil that wants to try to bring a separation to you and God. But I want you to hear something very clearly. How far is God for you or how far is, willing to, uh, is, is God willing to go for you today? Well, Scripture tells us that nothing, and I mean nothing, can separate you from his love. Yes, sin separates us from the fellowship of God, but it does not separate us from the love of our God. And his love for us was proven, again, through the giving of his son, Jesus Christ, while we were yet sinners. I want to read a passage from Romans to you this evening before we sign off from here and move to right now media. But that passage comes from Romans chapter 8, and it's verses 34 through 39. It says this, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced 
that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's a powerful truth today coming straight out of God's word for you today. And what I want you to understand today, when I say that statement, that God is for you, I want you to, again, grab a hold of the depth of that statement. God is for you so much that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son to die for us. God is for you so much that his love for you can never be separated from you. I want you to think about that for just a moment. God's love for you will never be separated from you. God's love for you is, is undeniable, is unbelievable, is, is off the charts. His love for you, it endures forever. God is for you. God is for you when you were made at the point of your creation. God was, is for you at, at the point of your, your new birth or you being born again at, at that point of, of redemption. Again, Christ died so that we could live again. I say all this to bring it to this point and then I encourage you to, to again go to Right Now Media and view session number four of the study simply called If. But I say all this to make this point again. God is for you and has great things in store for you. And if that is your view or your perception of God, then get ready. Because as you begin to step out in faith, as you begin to step out into those what if possibilities that God has in store for you, you better look out because God's gonna move in powerful ways. But if you see God in a negative sense, well, you might find yourself stuck in those if only regrets. You see, often what keeps us from experiencing God's what if possibilities are the restrictions that we place upon ourselves. God has made a way where there seemed to be no way. And all we have to do is take that step of faith, enter into that relationship with Jesus Christ and get ready because God will then pour in that new life or life more abundantly. I want to pray for you as we get ready to, again, close this introduction. And again, I want to encourage you, right now, media, find that study called If. If you look under the Heartland Worship Center Library of Resources, it's typically on the left-hand side of the screen. You'll find the study there. But I want to pray for you, and I'm believing for God's best for you. But in order for you to experience God's best, one, you have to believe that God is for you. And two, you have to be ready and willing to take that step of faith into the what if possibilities that he has for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this time of connection, for this time of being in your word and examining our lives and allowing the truth that you are for us to sink into our hearts. And I pray as we, as we kind of apply that truth tonight, as we watch this Right Now media segment, and as we continue to, to evaluate, I pray tonight, God, that for some viewpoints, or, or for some how, how people view you would change. God, that they wouldn't see you in a negative light, but God, they would see you in a positive light. God, that they would, they would grab a hold of that truth that you are for us. And Lord, in doing so, that they would take that step, that they would take that step of faith and enter into a relationship that leads to life more abundantly. God, bless us tonight and continue to pour out your spirit upon our homes and our hearts as we pursue you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope that you will engage in that study on Right Now Media, simply called If, Mark Batterson, Session number four, God is for you and has great things in store for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in the Lord. 
We've all had those moments where we feel trapped by life, feel like we're stuck in a rut. It just wore on me. The rejections that I got it was too much. I was very bitter. I kind of just threw everything out the window in regards to what I believed in. I came to a point after four years of being here where all of that was just not making me happy. I just remember falling apart and then I began to pray and she said, you go to your God and you fix this. I think God used the curiosity inside of me of wanting to know where my son was um, to lead me to his loving heart. I became com completely convicted that my circle of influence was too small, that there were people around me that were hurting to know Jesus. I didn't see him. I was too busy. We're going to focus on how to become unstuck, on how to see our lives and the world around us as God sees them. It seems like the same question that's asked over and over is why? What the Bible teaches is that consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. Well, our Savior is redemptively inclined toward prodigals, toward people like us. And let's be honest, y'all, every single one of us is prone to wander. God is not done with you. Your story isn't over. We have to see our lives in light of God's bigger plan, and we have to understand how our story intersects with the big story that God is writing. We'll start each session by watching part of the award-winning film, The Journey to Jamaa. This film was produced and filmed by Michael Landon Jr. and Brian Bird for World Vision and was inspired by the real-life story of Margaret and Derek, two orphan children from Uganda who made a journey across the country in a heartbreaking bid to overcome poverty and experience hope. It's time to make a difference. It's time to care. It's time to act. That's how we get unstuck.